Good morning, everyone. Um, I assume this is going to be a very niche uh, subject. Um, people here are probably interested in the SharePoint side of things because this is a Drupal conference, so it is very niche. Um, my name is Joe Harris. Uh, I work for a company called H3 Solutions. Um, I uh, started my career in Macromedia Flash uh, back in 1999. Um, so if we have any old school Flash people, uh, we should grab a beer and, uh, and, and talk. Um, I got into uh, the, the, the Microsoft stack uh, around 2004 and SharePoint. Um, I am mostly, mostly a Microsoft uh, developer, um, full stack developer. Um, data is really my, my comfort area, um, understanding data, databases, SQL, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so and, and then uh, I, I got into Drupal with, um, with the, the project that we're going to be uh, looking at some of the details uh, here in this session. So uh, what's going to be covered today? So we'll set up the, uh, the, the scenario with uh, how we got to where we are and, and why we had to migrate from, from SharePoint to Drupal. We'll talk about um, how we extract data from SharePoint. So this is um, you know, one, of the, one of the first steps. So you'll kind of notice in here you have an, an ETL type uh, situation, extract, transform, and load. So extracting from SharePoint, uh, we transform the data in Azure SQL. Again, this has to do with a comfort pick. This, is, this was my project, uh, basically. Um, so I chose the technologies I was most comfortable with. And I think that's, that's a really good kind of place to start when you're doing something like this. So um, if you're not that familiar with, with SQL, maybe doing, uh, doing your data transformations using PHP, Python, Perl, something, something that you're more comfortable with. Uh, and then ingesting the data into Drupal. Um, and we'll talk about how, uh, how we did that. We use uh, Migrate Plus uh, modules uh, within Drupal. And then I have a, a bonus migration use case, um, which if you were in the session before this, um, there was a guy that was sitting there talking about uh, his session, which is tomorrow, about um, data syncing and golden source. And we'll talk about a little bit about that. But if you want to know a whole lot about that, it sounded like his, his session tomorrow uh, would be really good for that as well. So the setup, um, this, this was a DoD customer. Uh, they were on SharePoint 2013. Uh, I did the original implementation of the SharePoint 2013 uh, website. Uh, it was uh, a, treated as a, a web content management system. Uh, we used a product called Akumina, uh, which attached on top of it to kind of give it that kind of Drupal slash WordPress type publishing interface. Uh, if you're familiar with um, SharePoint's out-of-the-box publishing capabilities. It's more kind of page-based, and you use WYSIWYGs and stuff like that. And we wanted a more content-type, actually a much more Drupal-friendly uh, style of uh, storage. Yeah. What was the name of that product? The one that we used on top of SharePoint, Akumina. A-K-U-M-I-N-A. -A. Yep. Um, so this, uh, we launched that site in um, 2016 or 2017, I believe 2017, uh, and it grew organically over seven years, um, and that's a, that's a very, very important point. Um, a lot of things happened between the launch of that site and the time we needed to uh, move off of it. Uh, a lot in terms of uh, new types of content, uh, new workflows, uh, new logic, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the decision to move to Drupal uh, was in 2021. Um, and it was, uh, we decided to go with the, the Acquia cloud and uh, do the migration into Drupal. Me being kind of the subject matter expert on the SharePoint side, um, I'm fairly new to to the Drupal community. Um, I, I've been doing PHP for, for a long time, so I'm, I'm familiar with that. Uh, I'm familiar with the data constructs of Drupal. I'm definitely not a Drupal developer, or at least I wasn't in 2021. Um, but because of my subject matter expertise, um, I was kind of tapped to take the reins on the migration from SharePoint into Drupal. So the process, I talked a little bit about this on the, on the previous slide. Um, it, it is pretty much a, a, an ETL process. 
Um, we extract uh, using PowerShell scripts. Uh, so I wrote, I don't know, maybe somewhere between 40 and 60 PowerShell scripts to pull the data out of SharePoint. Um, not only did we develop PowerShell scripts to pull the data, but also the documents. And SharePoint does some kind of interesting things in how it stores documents. There's two different, different types of ways, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but all of that data had to be extracted out of SharePoint. And actually, uh, before this session, somebody mentioned um, in the government, you know, firewalls and all that kind of stuff makes it very interesting. So the SharePoint environment was in a, an extranet. Um, we had to get the data, the data, to a place where we could load it into our SQL Server. Um, so we had to use a, a an intermediary, inter, intermediary um, transfer system to get those CSV files and documents up there, and then download those to our local environment so that we could get them up into uh, Azure SQL. So we would uh, take the CSVs. So these are CSVs that were. Uh, generating <clears throat> using PowerShell. We would import those into SQL. One really, really important note about the, um, the import of CSVs into SQL is uh, don't try to do any cleanup of your CSVs in Excel. I know you will be tempted to do that. The reason is an Excel cell can only hold 32,000 characters, or a little bit more than that. It's, it's uh, you know, whatever that byte length is, right? And if you bring your data, your CSV file, into Excel and you have some values that are larger than 32,000 characters, like, for example, the, the contents of a blog or something like that, it'll truncate it, and it won't even tell you. So anyway, that's, a, that's tip number one, is don't try to do any uh, manipulation of the data in Excel unless you are absolutely sure that there is no, uh, no data above 32,000 characters. So anyway, take our CSV files, put them into Azure SQL, uh, and from there we can do all kinds of things. So uh, we developed uh, user-defined functions, um, we uh, developed a, a number of, of scripts that would then take that, the data that's in SQL and export it into uh, XML files. So we decided on um, XML as our, um, the, the data storage or data uh, format for the data to come into Drupal. Uh, you have a couple of options. So you, you could use CSV, uh, you could use JSON, you could use um, <clears throat> like uh, uh, XML. We decided uh, it was between JSON and XML because we had some uh, one-to-many uh, relationships, which would be difficult to define in CSV. Uh, so uh, within XML, you know, you can have child nodes and things like that. Um, and so that's why we decided on XML as our output from Azure SQL. Uh, and then uh, the loading of this data was done using Migrate Plus. So Migrate Plus is a plugin in Drupal. Um, we used just Drush commands to, to run the migrates, so we didn't use any of the UI or anything like that. It was all just from the um, command line. Excuse me. So extracting data from SharePoint. SharePoint's weird, just generally speaking, in how it stores its, its data. Um, number one, you wouldn't want to try and extract it out of the SQL Server that SharePoint puts its data in, unless you have a PhD in how Microsoft has defined that SQL Server. It's very, very complex. So the reason we use PowerShell is we're able to kind of uh, understand it a little bit better <clears throat> and it's in the the constructs that SharePoint puts it in rather than the constructs that it is in SQL which is very kind of un, un uh, defined or definable so there's three types there's actually four types I didn't put the fourth box in here but I'll talk to it a little bit but um, items that's the main uh, the main component of the data that, that's getting moved over um, so in SharePoint uh, a list is kind of your, your main data construct, and that's what items come from, is they come from these things called lists. You can think of a list as, it's like a database table, is what a list is. Um, so your blogs, news, events, uh, actually page content, 
that is stored in SharePoint is actually stored in the uh, property fields of a list. So even though you might have an ASPX page that serves up the content, it's actually rendering that content from the value of a, a list um, field. Then you have attachments. So I should have put a box around items and attachments because attachments are um, file, files that can be attached to items. So imagine you have a, a table row, which is an item, and you can have a, a file attached to that row or multiple files attached to that row. Um, our site used attachments for things like um, you know, event summaries and, and tool documents and, and things like that. And so in order to get those attachments out, we had to use, again, PowerShell to get the, the blob content of those attachments and then put them into a file structure that is recognizable as you know, each folder is the ID of the, the, the item that it was attached to so that we can have an association between the two. Then you have files. These are document libraries within SharePoint. It's kind of like SharePoint's bread and butter, right? Um, we had to extract a, a, a number of, of images, uh, PDF documents. There were some PowerPoint documents um, and, and some Word documents and things of that nature. And we had to get those extracted out so that we could put them into the Drupal file system so that those files, when they're um, uh, referenced or linked to from content, uh, they'll still be able to get to those uh, from Drupal. And then the, the fourth box, which I'm not showing here, is discussion boards. So one thing that our site has is, is communities. And <clears throat> we had discussion boards in SharePoint. The way SharePoint defines a discussion board from a data perspective is a thread is a folder. And then the replies to that thread are <coughs> items inside that folder. So it was very interesting getting that data out and then uh, be, being able to get that into, we use uh, Drupal groups, uh, getting that data in as um, Drupal group or uh, forum posts and then, and then forum replies within the Drupal group. So as a quick example, um, I, have, I, I do have more uh, examples if you have specific questions. Um, this is a PowerShell example. Um, this one in particular is PowerShell for getting attachments uh, out of uh, a, um, a particular list. Um, <clears throat> but for a single list, we probably would have, or a single, a single content type, right? We would probably have about three or four PowerShell scripts to get all of the data for that content type. We would have a PowerShell script to get the, the, the item data itself. So that's the metadata fields for like, you know, title and, and body and, and all that stuff. Then we would have a PowerShell script to get all of the attachments for that, for that uh, uh, list. Then we would have a PowerShell script to get maybe all of the images that are referenced within there. And that would, that would output to, you know, all the blobs into a folder structure. And then any other um, document libraries that were supporting that content Maybe, maybe there's a, a document library where they were linking to pa uh, PDF files or linking to PowerPoint files or something like that. We would have to write a PowerShell script to, to export those as well. Um, the reason we would do them individually and, and not just a single PowerShell script to just export everything in mass is the, what I was talking about with the um, don't do anything with your CSV files in Excel. We needed, each PowerShell script needed to be specific to that content type so that we didn't have to do any uh, manipulation after the, after the fact. So then transforming the data in SQL. Um, this process was, uh, it's fairly simple, it's import CSVs into SQL just using the, the regular import function. Um, so each CSV that we would export um, would be a new table in our Azure SQL. Um, you don't have to use Azure SQL. You could probably use MySQL. You could use you know, any, other, any other, you could use a local SQL database if you'd like. 
Um, we used Azure SQL because it was readily, readily available by our uh, IT department. Um, and it could, it could scale up and down based on our needs. Uh, we wrote uh, a number of user-defined functions for some, some very, uh, very specific use cases. So uh, one of those use cases, and I have an example uh, once we finish with the, the presentation, I can, I can bring up some, some additional scripts to show you. Um, but one user-defined function that was very, very useful was um, a lot of the data that we had in SharePoint was, I'm going to call it semi-structured. So in our um, uh, a wiki uh, uh, batch of articles, right? In, in our wiki, one of our um, fields is supporting training. So what training is available for this wiki article, right? And that was just an HTML content blog. So the, the content authors could go in there, they'd create links to, to the training that, that they could associate with. But there was no like actual entity reference. Then in Drupal, what we want is we want actual entity references to those trainings so that it's all linked up correctly rather than just this HTML blob of text. So in SQL, we wrote a user-defined function that could look at that that would load the um, HTML as XML, and then we could write XPath queries to normal kind, kind of normalize that data and um, get it out and into a way that we can <clears throat> make entity reference uh, queries or not queries entity reference injections into our our migration. So then. Um, in SQL, probably had somewhere between 40 and 60 uh, uh, scripts for exporting the, the XML files um, that would be used in uh, uh, Migrate Plus. Um, and then those XML files we would put into the, uh, the file system of Drupal. We didn't have to. Um, you have a number of options for where uh, Drupal Migrate can, can actually pull from uh, in terms of data, um, but we found that the file system in Drupal was a, a pretty uh, consistent way that we could uh, that we could we could put those there and use them. So this is this is just a quick example of one of the SQL scripts. So um, I'm not going to talk through line by line, but the 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 important the important bit here is this is a scripting language just like PowerShell. So our decision for how we're doing this, um, we wanted to make sure we were using scripting languages that don't need to be compiled, that can be updated quickly, and we can um, try and retry our processes over and over. Um, so again, I have other examples. If you have specific, uh, specific questions, we can, uh, we, can, we can run over those. So then this is, a, this is an example of the, the XML, the, the output from SQL. This XML file should be fairly recognizable. So then importing into Drupal, um, Migrate Plus was the, the, the module of choice. And I think we use also Migrate Tools. I think Migrate Tools is the module that's required for uh, the Drush commands so that you can uh, write those from uh, the command line. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. We had uh, a, a lot of um, back and forth with uh, an Acquia architect on, on different ways to, to bring this data in. Uh, you can see this, this sub-process, this extract here, is um, how we can get at the one-to-many relationships within uh, the XML. So. Uh, in, in our XML definition, let's say you had three different uh, file attachments for that particular piece of content. Um, we would have in the XML, there would be a, a node which might be called files, and then some subnodes in there which are the, the attachments. Um, you, you reference those in the, the, um, the YAML as an XPath query in the source. And then you loop through those in this sub process so that you can you can get at them. Um, it's a little bit cryptic, but if that's a use case that anybody here has, uh, happy to happy to walk you through it. 
So then our, our bonus migration uh, topic here, which is um, using uh, Migrate Plus for or the, the Migrate framework for loading external data. So this is um, the idea that you have golden source data out there that you don't want to necessarily bring in and manage in Drupal, but you want to bring it in to Drupal for use. Um, there's a number of, of reasons to do that. Uh, the, at least on Acquia, the solar search engine can't crawl external sites. So if you have external stuff that you want included in your search results, you do have to bring it, or at least if you're on Acquia, you have to bring it into the Drupal environment so that it can be available in your search results. So we have three external or golden source um, areas that we needed to, to load data from. Um, we have a uh, course catalog. Government loves their training. So um, there's a course catalog which has the golden source for all the training. We have a taxonomy management system. So um, the idea there is you're able to define uh, Taxon organizational taxonomy uh, centrally that's used by multiple systems. Uh, and then we have media, a media service, which is you know, basically like you know, their own YouTube management uh, system. So what we did is we built um, uh, what we call a, a, an enterprise API, which uses uh, Azure, Azure functions, Azure functions that reach into those different uh, systems. Um, the great thing about, about Azure and, and how our organization or the organization I was, I was doing work for has adopted it is um, it's very, very good at uh, networking. And so, like for example, that taxon taxonomy management system, that's an on-premise uh, product that is uh, hosted on a, on a server somewhere, um, not in the cloud. But because our Azure network is connected to our on-prem network, um, it all worked fairly seamlessly, and we were able to write these uh, Azure functions to reach back into these uh, these systems to make them available through an uh, API gateway in Azure, which then Drupal connects to those via the API gateway. So then we have um, scheduled jobs in Azure, or not Azure, in Acquia, scheduled jobs, which basically all those are is, you know, on a schedule, run this drush command. So uh, on a schedule, run a migrate command um, that is set up as a, um, a nightly uh, migrate uh, 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 set of data. So um, the high watermark property is very, very important for this type of migration. So if you're not familiar with that, what that is is you can uh, specify a property in your, in your migrate uh, scripts, your migrate YAML, um, as a high watermark um, property. And it will check that, and if it's um, greater than in the source data, then it will update your data with what's in the source. It doesn't overwrite or delete, it just updates the, the fields, um, which, is, which is really important. Um, for a high watermark property, we typically would look at using dates. So, <clears throat> for example, in our taxonomy management system, it has a last modified date. Um, we would use that if so. Uh, only only the changes that have happened since the last time we did migration, which is nightly, uh, it, it'll update those. So then another important piece was um, we found that Migrate Plus is supposed to have a delete flag when you do a migration. So um, when you pass in uh, dash dash delete, it's supposed to. Uh, remove items that don't exist in the source anymore but are in your system that were migrated. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working, so we used a module called Orphan Purge so, um, so that items that are removed in the golden source can be removed in our system as well. So, for example, uh, if a, uh, a training course is removed, we want to make sure we're not reflecting, we're, we're not, you know, serving that training course in our, uh, in our system. Um, and then, like I talked about before, the, the important piece of this, the reason why we did this, is we need to be able to use this external data in our views, in our blocks, and, and then also in, in, in search results. So I think 
that gets us to the end. I'd really like to, to take any questions that you guys have. Uh, what was like the page count size of the site you were migrating? Good question. So the question was, what's the what was the page count or size of the of the site? So I would say from a from a node perspective, it's, it probably created about fifty five hundred nodes, uh, maybe six thousand nodes. Um, uh, no, that's not true. A lot more than that because of the communities. So outside of the communities, about fifty five hundred. Once we got communities uh, migrated as well, that was another twenty one thousand. So all in all, somewhere between twenty five and thirty thousand nodes. And why would the customer want to migrate away from SharePoint? So um, the question is, why was the customer wanting to migrate from SharePoint? Um, so the decision to go with SharePoint in 2016, when they decided, um, was that they owned it, right? Um, I think every, every, not every government agency owned it, but, but they already owned it, right? Um, and so there was a very low barrier to entry for using SharePoint for, for the public facing website back then. Um, the, the prevailing forces um, in 2020 and 2021, uh, they really wanted to get away from SharePoint because Microsoft really wasn't talking about SharePoint as a web content management system anymore. Um, they were really focused on Office 365 and SharePoint Online and uh, SharePoint 2013 was coming towards end of life, so we had to get off of it. Um, so our options were upgrade to 20, 2016 or 2019 or something like that, or move on to Drupal. And, and the, the folks who, who were driving um, Drupal were the ones making the decision. <laughs> I, I, think it was, I think it was a good, it was a good decision. Um, I don't think SharePoint is, is sustainable as a web content management system, not for the future, at least. Um, if you have it already, and, and you're still on a platform that's gonna be good and not, not hit end of life for, for a few years, it's, it's probably fine. Um, but if you're looking beyond that, uh, SharePoint is, I don't think, is, is going to be sustainable. And, and Drupal, it's, that's its bread and butter. And that's public facing web. Yeah. yeah. So I had the same question, and in your answer, you kind of read my mind. I'm having that debate right now within my own program area at NIH, where I'm being asked to strongly consider moving from Drupal to SharePoint. Um, what would you say are the or the upsides to the migration, kind of from the program area's perspective, not the admin who you know, probably has a saner file system in, in Drupal? post-migration, but what would the end users or the program area recognize as being the upside coming from SharePoint into Drupal? I think the hardest thing for any anything like this is change. Uh, you, the, the upside, unless they have significant pain right now, if they have significant pain right now and, and you're going to make changes that are going to, to impact them um, positively, then I think that's that's good. I, I know this is a, it's a bad answer to your question, but the the end users and the content authors, they're not going to like change. They that link might. And here's the other thing: the really really hard thing is it's very difficult to maintain URLs, almost impossible, because a lot of SharePoint URLs .aspx. And um, so you're going to have to do either a, a bunch of HT access work for you know URL redirects, or um, uh, Path Auto, or some something to try and alleviate that. But that's that's the biggest the biggest thing is change, and and pe people hate change. So I mean, were you aware of that change management in terms of the users coming out of this migration, and how did they? So no, um, I, all I could go off of was my experience that from the original uh, development, and we were we developed the, the the SharePoint site from a SharePoint 2010 site. It wasn't a migration or an upgrade or anything. It was, it was brand new, but the original site was so simple. It was basically just a brochure, 
And then what we put into place with um, 2013 and, and the new one was a bunch of workflows and, and repositories and you know a whole bunch of stuff that people could use. And, and I, I think they, they did like that. And there wasn't a whole lot of complaining about that. Um, but then coming into Drupal, it, it's, it's been a little challenging. Um, and, and really, it's, it's not a technology issue. It's more of a people management, expectation management issue, right? Because, again, when you have a website that serves thousands of people every day, and the link that they used to go to changes, that's painful. So more to that, like, you know, that Drupal instance, is it a homegrown, like, you know, Drupal Aquia. or a government, like a FabRam? It's Acquia. Acquia, okay. Yeah, Acquia platform, which is, um, and it's it's government, Acquia, Acquia yeah, for government. Yeah. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As far as your, like, migration timeline, like, how long, because you said you were running, like, the nightly migrations, does that mean... Y'all were doing that so you could have an up-to-date Drupal site you could work on. And then, like, how long was the site down or frozen for the actual cutoff from the SharePoint to the Drupal? Right. Okay. So um, the the nightly migrations that we talked about, um, those are golden source bringing in golden source data. Mm -hmm. Those happen every night. They still happen, right? Okay. okay. Um, those that's to bring in data that um, you're not managing in Drupal, right? Um, as far as the, the cutover and like how all of that worked, um, we did a, a moratorium on um, content creation in SharePoint. Um, for, uh, we, we tried to do it rolling based on different content types and like what are the most um, heavily changing content types. We'll do those last. Um, I think we, we, we got 10 days of, of leeway. So when when we said this is when news is going to be migrated, um, the moratorium is ten, 10 days before that. We probably could have done it a little bit shorter, but we wanted the buffer. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can go on to the way, way too. Mm -hmm. Is it at all possible to point to migrate directly to the that's a good question. So yes, it is. You could, um, as long as, as long as your Drupal environment can, uh, from a network perspective, connect to the REST APIs in SharePoint. That would be the way I would do it. Now, you asked, can you connect directly to the SharePoint database? Probably, I wouldn't recommend it. So the SharePoint database is a, a highly normalized, odd structure of content. I mean, the, the list items are stored in a table that has 255 columns, and all of the columns are generically named. So yeah, it's, I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you wanted to try getting at the data through the REST APIs, the SharePoint REST APIs, you could do that. Now, all of your data manipulation would have to be done You'd probably have to write like a, a, a migrate plugin so that it would be in PHP. And that goes back to my comment about, you know, do what you're comfortable with. So if you're comfortable in writing PHP and, and a PHP plugin for migrate, then that would probably be a good, a good place to try. Yeah. Anyone else? In your PowerShell script, the web URL, was that pointing to a SharePoint API? So, n no, it just points to the, so, um, let, me, let me go back to that, I'll show you. Uh, this guy. So, um, when you do, um, so the first thing you have to do is you have to add this SharePoint PowerShell uh, Snap-in. So that will that will add all of the PowerShell functions that you can do from uh, that that have to do with SharePoint. So programmatically getting access to SharePoint. 
Um, the web URL, so this has to be the, um, the URL that is registered with SharePoint as the URL of your website. So if you're familiar with SharePoint Central Administration, there's like an area where you set up you know, uh, alternate access mappings and all that kind of stuff. This has to be one of those. So then um, down here, this get-spweb, that's a, that's a method that's loaded from this uh, snap-in. So then this represents the spweb object, if you're familiar with uh, um, SharePoint's uh, objects. So that's the spweb object, and then here's the list and go on. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Did you get your page histories, or was that like a cutoff and starting fr fresh? We did not. You're, you're talking about um, like the, the version history? Mm -hmm. We did not. Um, as long as Drupal supports uh, revisions in Migrate, then you probably could. Um, we didn't investigate that. I'm not sure if it does, but it probably does. Because revisions is a table, and I think most of, uh, most of the Migrate framework is based around tables and, and the data. Yeah. yeah. How did you deal with redirects? What was that? I'm sorry? How did you deal with redirects? Redirects? So like um, trying to, to get people to the, to the right page. So HT access, um, some of it. And then uh, uh, URL aliasing for some of it as well. Um, we did a couple of, uh, like, in the URL aliases where you can define patterns, um, we did a couple of patterns that are based on fields. Um, and then we would supplement those fields using migrate. Um, I know that you can do URL aliases directly from Migrate, so you could do it that way as well. Yeah. yeah. One thing that changed was SharePoint that you upgraded. We only used the search feature, and on a public-facing site, they changed the license from per server to per user. So <coughs> that really drives up your cost if you're a wow. big site. <laughs> Could you use something like, um, because it's a public facing site, right? Um, could you use something like Azure Search, Bing Search, something or like that? Switching to Elasticsearch. Oh, okay. Well, Elasticsearch, the, it's like a database, right? It's like a. It's kind of like solar. Is it? Okay. Um, so then you'll be, you'll be crawling your, your public facing front end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Awesome. Well, thanks for coming, guys. Thank if you, you have any questions, feel free to reach out.